Ralph McGill was the most prolific and influential newspaper columnist ever to be published in Atlanta, becoming a voice throughout the country for a progressive South. One of the most amazing things about Ralph McGill was that he wrote a page one column every day. In fact, he published in the Atlanta Constitution more than 10,000 columns. I know he wrote them awfully fast. He would write them on, on, a, on white paper with lines, and he wrote very fast. And I could see him do a column, and it was just took him no time at all. Not only did he write seven days a week, but he left the columns when he went on vacation. He was always there, and on the front page eventually. Not always on the front page, but eventually he put him on the front page. He was writing with a large global vision. Uh, he understood what was happening across the world. He understood that, that the uprising of African Americans, then called Negroes, in the South at that time was really part of a worldwide phenomenon, uh, a, an anti-colonial attitude that was emerging on multiple continents, uh, not just in the United States. McGill's international interests may have been sparked by his travels in the 1930s to Cuba and then Europe on a fellowship to learn about agriculture. But he returned as the new editor of the Atlanta Constitution's editorial page with a revelation. It's while he's over there in 1938 that he ventures outside of Scandinavia and sees Adolf Hitler speaking to the masses, and he finds it breathtaking, the power that this man holds over people, and, and, and the sway that he has, uh, that his demagoguery has, and he is impressed by what he calls this evil evangelist and his ability to sway people. Another turning point for McGill was a visit to Morehouse College in the late 1940s, when he was questioned relentlessly about his acceptance of separate but equal educational facilities. He went to uh, Morehouse University and they really sort of showed him that separate was not equal. And he went home that night. That's when he changed, like overnight, he changed his view from being, you know, separate but equal to, no, total integration. He analyzed um, in 1949 the uh, budgets uh, for schools in the South. And since we were separate, uh, should the budgets be equal? <laughs> of course, they were far from equal. And just the simple fact of pointing this out in print, not only in Atlanta, but also in the Northern Press and the Atlantic Monthly, he had an audience, uh, in magazine audience nationally as well, um, drew him hate, hate mail, uh, hate phone calls, garbage on his lawn, bullets in his mailbox, Julia found the bomb in their uh, mailbox. Um, he slept with a rifle. Um, he was aware, his father was aware that the family was in danger every day. The violent opponents of desegregation one day bombed a school in Tennessee and a Jewish temple in Atlanta. That set off McGill's temper, and that earned him a Pulitzer Prize. So in addition to condemning the bombers, he condemned the um, harvest of hate that was uh, promulgated by the southern governors who opposed desegregation after the board of, after the uh, um, Supreme Court had ruled in 1954 in uh, Brown versus Board of Education. When he was called to present on a national stage, going on Meet the Press or, you know, various national forums, he was awkward, uh, felt awkward, about becoming the South's critic because he so loved the South. Ralph McGill was part of the leadership of Atlanta, the people in business and the community's leaders who cared deeply about the city and its image and its progress. You didn't have that in Birmingham, and you didn't have that in Jackson, Mississippi, and you didn't have it in Memphis, and you had it a little bit in Nashville, and you could almost gauge the intensity of the strife in those cities by how much press leadership they had. Ralph McGill was one of a core of people who believed it was better for Atlanta to um, go this route toward desegregation peacefully as opposed to the um, violent op opposition. Better for Atlanta in many ways, including economically. And their, their strategy pretty much succeeded. 
So Atlanta became known as the city too busy to hate. <laughs>